Hey friends, what's up? Aaron here, Question Period Canada. I have a question for you. Besides Poliev, how many conservatives do you know? There's a bunch of them. He has killers in that caucus. We're going to get to know who some of the politicians are that Pierre has on his side and some of the reasons that the Liberals should be concerned about these people. They're probably going to win the seats. But let's get into it. Up first is Andrew Scheer. He's an MP from Regina. He's been in the House of Parliament since 2004, and from 2011 to 2015, he was a Speaker of the House. He was also the leader of the Conservative Party from 2017 to 2020. He was also the leader of the opposition during that period of time. He's got a sharp tongue, these big dimples, and these mischievous eyes. He's funny. Here, check him out. From Regina Capel. Are in complete carbon tax chaos over there, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. Their pause on the pain doesn't apply to 97% of Canadians, and it punishes those who use cleaner Canadian natural gas and propane to heat their homes. What did the Liberal Rural Affairs Minister have to say? She said, well, if people in other areas want the pause too, they should elect Liberals. Well, the people in North Bay did ele elect a Liberal MP. So again, to the Prime Minister, to the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, will he allow a free vote so that the members from North Bay can vote on our motion to take the tax off and keep the heat on. So Sheer does have these dimples and these big baby eyes like a, a doll of some sort. It's funny. Up next though is Melissa Lanceman. She's an MP from Ontario from Thornhill and she is hard. She goes hard at the Liberals every time. She has this interesting hairstyle. It's such a cowlick. I like it. And Every time she brings entertainment and makes good points here. Check out Melissa. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. It certainly doesn't help the people in Newmarket, in Aurora, in Richmond Hill, in Woodbridge, in Markham, in Stouffville, or in North York. All of these communities got sold out by their Liberal MPs, and they can't even tell people why. They had a choice to stand with their communities, and instead they stood with the Prime Minister, and now they're hiding and hoping that everybody forgets. If these MPs won't listen to their constituents, won't advocate for them in the House of Commons, and won't even stand to defend their vote, then what are they even doing here? So she goes off like that almost every time. She really puts it to the Liberals. She's sharp. And here's a little known thing. She's the first Jewish and openly gay conservative woman ever elected to Parliament. First one. Good on her. Up next, John Barlow. Clark Kent. He's an MP from Alberta that has been in Parliament since 2014. He won her in a by-election, but since then, he's been representing Foothill since 2015. Interesting enough, Clark Kent here, you'll see what I'm talking about. He looks just like Superman's alter ego, Clark Kent. Before he got into politics, he worked for a newspaper. That's interesting. John is really sharp. Let's check him out. The Honourable Member from Foothills. The Prime Minister joined the separatists to divide Canadians. Those Canadians will have to pay a carbon tax on their home heating over the winter, and 3% of Canadians will get a pause on the pain. It's clear that the Liberals and the Bloc, their Christmas gift to Canadians, is to punish families for heating their homes this winter. Right. They voted against a common-sense Conservative motion to take the tax off for every single Canadian. Again. What Christmas wish did the Prime Minister grant the separatists for the Liberals to avoid an election on the carbon tax? So what do you guys think of John Barlow? I thought he was a geek at first. He is not. He's a serious politician. Up next, Kyle Seaback. He's an Ontario MP. He's uh, been in Parliament since 2011. He lost the election in 2015, but then he came back in 2019. He gives it to the Liberals straight and always is a very calm demeanor when he's delivering his questions. Check out Kyle. The Honourable Member from Dufferin Caledon. A minister making $300,000 a year, being driven around in a limo, says I'm making a political stunt when I talk about a retired senior who can't pay the carbon tax. This behaviour by them is disgusting. And not all Liberals have to behave that way because on Monday, a common sense Conservative motion to axe the tax will take place. They don't have to behave like a limousine Liberal minister. They can stand up for their constituents. They can vote to take the tax off so people like Siggy can keep the heat on. 
So Polyev isn't the only conservative that puts insults, lots of them, in his questions. Seebach just did it there a number of times. Up next, we've got Mike Barrett. He's another conservative MP from Ontario, and he is looking to find out who got rich. This is a bit of a ramble, but man, the details are in the words. Just take a listen. The question is obviously for the minister, and if he's too afraid to tell Canadians which of their insiders are getting paid, we learned yesterday from the hand-picked chair that she got $120,000 after moving a motion to get $200,000 paid directly to her company. Millions of taxpayer dollars are being funneled to ineligible companies through corruption and conflicts of interest at this very minute. This minister's officials said that heads would roll, people would be fired, they lost confidence in the board. They found out it was a political problem, decided they wouldn't fire anyone. The Auditor General is investigating, so should Parliament. We want to know who got rich. So I told you, Michael Sharp, who got rich? Which Liberal insiders got rich? There is a theme developing. Up next, Stephanie Cousy, an MP from Alberta, who was elected in 2017 in a by-election, it has been in the House since, she flies out about a similar scandal, pointing fingers. Who got rich? Which liberal insiders? It's fun to watch. Stephanie's a firecracker for sure. The member from Calgary, Mindeport. Damning new information revealed today shows that Arrive Can contractors submitted receipts to the government for a company that doesn't even exist. Wow. This investigation already includes allegations of identity theft, forged resumes, contractual theft, fraudulent billing, price fixing, and collusion in the creation of the $54 million Arrive Can app. How much worse can this boondoggle get? Simple question which liberal insiders got rich? Who got rich? Did she say boondoggle? And yes, Kusi did say boondoggle. What a word. Who got rich? Boom. She's fun to watch, guys. Up last, we've got Polyev, the seasoned veteran, just to show you who the king really is. His insults in his questions, they set Trudeau off right here. Trudeau can't even answer the question, which was about a food bank, reasonably. He ends up talking about transgender issues, children with issues about transgender being picked on, women having rights over their bodies. The question was about a food bank and he lost it. Anyways, we'll take a peek at that because Polyev is the boss. Let's check it. Leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister only divides to distract. That's all he ever does when he gets into trouble. He divides people along every possible battle line. He did that with the carbon tax carve out for only some in a region where his support is plummeting and his caucus is revolting. And for 10 days, he refused to condemn the comments of his own Liberal Minister who said this policy was applying based on how people voted. And now he signs on with the separatists to divide Canadians again. Will he instead of dividing Canadians reverse the policies that are driving them to the food bank? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we see the Conservatives' approach uh, to partisan politics and to personal attacks. The reality is, when we stood with the 80 to 90 percent of Canadians uh, who chose to get vaccinated, they called us divisive. When we chose to stand uh, with uh, women across this country who want to control their own bodies, they called us divisive. When we stand with the two SLGBTQI plus kids who are being discriminated against, So what do you think about Trudeau flying off there? Does it make you nervous that your leader represents himself that way? Can't even answer a question. Don't need to freak out, buddy. Just answer the question. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Now you know a little bit more about some of the great personalities that the Conservative Party has that will be probably winning seats in the next federal election. It seems that way right now. I don't know. It seems like people are frustrated out there. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Aaron. This is Question Period Canada. We're having fun here with Canadian politics. Think about it. Like, subscribe. We're doing good things. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. We're out.